everyone, and uh, welcome to the special uh, cast stream of Venture Society. With me are some of my good friends. Um, let's start with Heather. Heather, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. Heather O'Neill, uh, CEO of Ninth Level Games and co-designer of Venture Society with Tim. And I'm excited to show you the game. Uh, Jim? Hey, everybody. I am Jim Crocker. I generally use he, him pronouns, but if you're using they, them more generically, that's totally fine with me, too. I run and play a whole lot of games online. You can find me online at Jim Likes Games just about everywhere. That's my Twitter handle. That's what I use on YouTube and stuff like this. And I know uh, Tim from uh, attending a whole lot of, and, and Heather, for that matter, from attending a whole lot of conventions with them where we tend to run into each other a whole lot. So I'm really grateful to be invited. Thanks for having me here, Tim. It's, it's good to have you here. Laura? <laughs> Thank you, Laura. I love you. Um, Nina. I think that leaves me. Um, yeah, I'm Nina Taylor Kester. Um, and I uh, am thankfully sucked into these things because I'm married to the person who's producing today's uh, game. Uh, I also am a um, storytelling um, curious individual. Uh, I don't like to say expert because uh, I don't think that's a thing, really. Um, but uh, I'm teach at the California College of Arts uh, in their uh, younger in their youth programs right now, and hopefully more to come. And then um, I also am about to start and launch my own business called Become Storied. So I've got some social media handles already uh, set up. So if you want to hear what's good when that does come forward, uh, just find me on your favorite social media channel. Laura, I want to hear, uh, Laura, you know, I want to hear what's good because uh, we'll talk later. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm Timothy Grant. Uh, you'll, uh, if anyone's recognized me from uh, Friday nights on cast where we play Avatar Legends, which I run, uh, check it out uh, next, no, not next Friday, the following Friday, um, we'll be continuing our story. Uh, but today we're playing Venture Society. Uh Heather, would you like to talk about uh, Venture Society? I would, except for my, my camera keeps being a real pain in the butt. So uh, <laughs> one second while I uh, deal with uh, this very annoying uh, thing that keeps happening. No problem. Never mind. I'm going to have to see you over here. My one display decided to crap out right now. Of course it did. Hi. Um, anyway, so Venture Society is a uh, all ages, uh, nonviolent role playing game. Um, it, where, that takes place in a world of animals where the players are new members of the Venture Society. And the Venture Society is kind of like a scouts meet student council organization that is worldwide in this world. Um, and it's kind of like an honor to be uh, in this. Uh, and it's important to the community and to the kids. Uh, in addition, um, this game builds social emotional learning skills. Uh, and it doesn't just do that through just normal RPG and play. It actually has the social emotional uh, areas as the economy of the game. So the GM or guide, as we call it, will be actually keeping track of how well the group's communication skills are. How is their emotional wellness? What are their social interactions like? And um, are they exhibiting their personal strengths? And that's going to be a, a myriad of little things that could happen that depending on how if you're using this for therapy, you might really hone in on something. Whereas if you're a parent or playing just for fun, you might not even worry about, you know, uh, doing that too much and just kind of having fun in the game. But, you know, ultimately that's the, that's the goal of Venture Society and to be a fun way for younger players, you know, in that five to 15 year old range to be able to kind of have this conversation without it being like an actual one-on-one -on -one session or a group therapy session type of situation. Yeah. So welcome everyone to Venture Society. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the, some of the rules and we're going into some safety tools uh, that we're going to have into place. And uh, then we'll start our play. So uh, Venture Society is a game that is ran off the Polymorph system. And if you're not familiar with the Polymorph system, it is a one die per player model 
where everyone uh, will only roll one die to try to uh, succeed at a action. So uh, in this game, we have actions look like uh, when you roll your dice, if you roll a one, you fail, but you receive a help token. And the help token can be used by anyone after that point where uh, it could be something that, for example, uh, you could spend one to try again and re-roll your die, um, trying something different to try to succeed. You could, uh, I have this, so you could have an item that could give you advantage. It's a, a short time use item. You're spending two tokens uh, to do that. Or you can spend three tokens and I have an idea uh, or I have a plan, I should say. And all the players will talk about what this plan is and then execute it with uh, with per precision and you will automatically succeed. Uh, if you are trying to do something that has to do with uh, reading some complicated language or remembering something or keeping calm in a stressful situation, you're gonna roll a focus roll on your die. And if you get a two or three, you will succeed. Uh, there is a move roll where if you're doing something physical, running, jumping, trying to lift something, um, trying to uh, trying to look bigger just to to feel like strong and and like show your presence, you would do a move roll where that would be a three, four, or a five to succeed. There is a words action where if you were trying to communicate something. Uh, that is uh, complicated or trying to um, ask questions, maybe make noises or gestures that uh, someone else that may speak a different language. Maybe you're trying to communicate with someone. How can you do that appropriately? Or if you're trying to be motivating, uh, you would do a words roll and that is a four, five, six, or seven to succeed. Uh, if you uh, are trying to do something that is heartfelt, you would do a heart action, which is trying to be brave, protecting people, uh, assisting others, things of that nature. And if you to succeed on that as a five, six, seven, eight, or a nine, uh, and then you would succeed. If you roll the highest value of your die, and in most polymorph system uh, games, it's called a crown. Uh, in this, we're calling it venture. Everyone will yell, venture! Um, and then you will succeed at that uh, within the, uh, the confines of whether the GM accepts uh, what you're offering. And it would be something that your animal may be uh, good at naturally or because of an item you have or because of a special condition that might be in place. Uh, there are different roles in the game. There is the mover, which is someone who moves a lot. They are good at... Um, being quick, uh, reacting first, uh, portraying someone strong, things like that. The talker is someone who is good at creating plans or coming up with solutions or uh, talking their way through something. The protector is someone who is uh, brave. They are, they kind of wear their heart on their sleeve. They are very emotional at times and they're, they're good at showing and recognizing emotions. Um, so the mover is a D6, the talker is a D8, and the protector is a D10, and you're only ever going to roll that die if you are that roll. Other type of uh, rolls will be um, advantage or disadvantage, depending on the situation. I will award advantage to something. If you are using an item that you carry that you think could help, uh, and you can explain to me how you think it would be helpful to use that item at that time, I will give you advantage. Or other, if you can uh, explain to me how you think you would have advantage, I would grant it. Or disadvantage. And what does advantage do for us, Tim, mechanically? It, uh, advantage will allow you to roll your die twice. And if you succeed at either one of them, then you succeed. And on disadvantage, you would have to roll uh, success twice in order to succeed. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for the question. Um, then 
for the most part, that is the rules of venture society. And I think we could get into our safety mechanics. So in venture society, we talk about using lines and veils a lot. And I, I feel that sometimes they are the simplest things to, to use, especially with uh, kids. So uh, it's easy to explain a line is something that I really don't like to talk about and uh, I don't want to have in my game. A veil is something that I'm okay with, but it feels kind of icky. And um, I usually like to use something that's uh, called spotlights, something that we really like to see in the game, where I'd like to push a little further with. And, and sometimes we'll, we'll refer to that as well if there's something that you would like to see more of in the game. In the game. Um, and as always, if uh, you really don't like something, you don't want to explain it, you know, just throw the X up and we will, we will stray away from whatever subject that we're talking about at the time. Uh, now, speaking about lines and veils, are there any lines that anyone has that we don't want to bring up in this game? Um, and mindful that this is a, a very heartfelt game where we're not going to try to touch on very very dark themes, but uh, if there's anything that we don't want to touch on, just to make sure that no one crosses that line. I mean, I think if we start by saying that we're going to peg it at like a PG rating yep. and anything that we wouldn't see in like a PG rated cartoon, we wouldn't yes. see in our game. That feels like a good place to start for me. I so would, that we I, don't have to have a laundry list of yeah, adult yeah. stuff. With, I was going to say, Jim, gonna be there yet kind of meant to be very G or PG at the max. So mm -hmm. uh, hopefully it, it won't go that anywhere near there. So I'm good with that. That sounds great. Yeah. Sounds are, good there, too. are there any veils uh, that we wouldn't want to explore or just kind of like if they're there, then they're there, but we're not going to go into detail. Okay. Any spotlights, anything that we want to have in the game a little more than maybe uh, than any other game that we have uh, played before. I want to see, I want to spotlight where we live, like each of our little places that we have. Perfect. And, 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 right. and, and maybe make sure we visit each other in those places so that we can be hosts and guests and things like that. I think that my character in general is going to, bring a spotlight onto identity okay <laughs> um so spotlighting you know i identity in a in a positive and acceptance kind of way okay mm -hmm. any other spotlights i'm happy with that and then lara lara do you have any other ideas <laughs> my brain is fried i <laughs> I, I got my but, mic issue working yeah, i think so <laughs> yeah and okay i think one of the cool things about um safety tools is like yes there we have this check-in at the beginning of the game but we can add to it whenever yes. we need to oh yeah absolutely if there's ever a time we feel like we need to add something to a line or veil or even a spotlight in the middle of the game mm -hmm. don't be afraid to just say hey tim let's let's do this sure all about it <laughs> All right, so let's jump into our play. So we're gonna do character creation or characters? Uh, yes, let's let's talk about our characters. Uh, <laughs> who I, are I was we? Gonna, I <laughs> we know who gonna, we are. <laughs> I was gonna uh, do that a little after, but I think we could do that now. Who yeah. are our characters today? And we'll start in the same order that we did our introductions. So Heather, you're first. I was gonna say, I believe that was me. Uh, trying to remember five minutes ago. Um, so I am. So uh, just for the audience who might not be knowing this, when we make our characters, um, it's a very simple, basically three questions. So you have to have your name if it's not your own name. Uh, what animal are you? What helpful thing do you do? And what item do you have? Um, there's basically going to be three questions. So I am a hawk. And I thought it would be funny to name myself Ethan, he, him. Um, 
I have a, uh, the job that I do is I live uh, in a farm uh, outside of Venture Village, which is like where we live. Um, and I give rides to small animals back and forth from the farm. Um, so I have a small basket kind of strapped to my back pretty much at all times. Um, then the other thing is, you know, Tim mentioned in polymorph, what die are you, right? Um, so in this, you could be the mover, talker, or protector, as we said. So I decided to be the talker, the D8, and uh, I'll be very chatty. I'm meeting people all the time. I'm, you know seeing how their trips went. I'm asking them if they need a ride. Um, so I pretty much know everybody in my town and I'm always like asking about them and what's going on and, and everything like that. All right, Jim, you're up next. Hey, yes, I am Buckminster. My name is Buckminster. I am a beaver and my job is I build and repair houses in, uh, in Venture Village. Um, and, it, and not just, not just beaver houses, but you know, I will work on anybody that needs help with their house. You name it, birds, nests, you know, um, uh, uh like, like, like wood, woodchuck, like, you know, woodchuck houses, um, uh, you know, uh, bat nests, whatever it is, you know, little bat houses, um, uh, dog houses, uh, the cat windowsill rests, whatever it is you need, I can, I can help you with it because I carry around my little tool belt with me at all times, which has some tools I can use and stuff like that. But it's mostly my belt that kind of helps keep my, you know, little, uh, my, like my dungarees up and stuff like that. So, nice. uh, and I am, uh, I'm a mover. Cause I'm always, that's what I'm doing. I'm going around Venture Village, helping people out, doing stuff. And, you know, certainly I'll be happy to say hi, but usually I'm on my way to somewhere to get something done to help somebody out. So that's on the move. Nice. And you're the T6, Laura. I got to do this last second because uh, I was producing. So I knew I wanted to be a meerkat. My name is Quinn, pronouns she, her. Uh, and I decided I'm going to be a chef. I carry around my favorite jar of spices because you never know when you have to add a little flavor to the situation. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'm, I cook things for the people in Venture Village. And I take pride in the food that I make. Um, and I chose the protector dye. I think I'm going to be helping people cook. I cook food. Maybe my food can be like cheer people up, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, that's who I am. Nice. Uh, what what type of item do you carry with you? The, the jar of favorite spices. All right. <laughs> and what was your name again? Quinn. Quinn. I'm curious if I'm guessing where you're getting that uh, name from is correct. Is no. it from a certain uh, band of twins? No. No. Okay. No. Right. <laughs> Although now that you say that, maybe I used a random <laughs> name generator, <laughs> but maybe I was drawn to it for a reason. Yeah. Go. Cool. And Nina. All right. So my character's name is Bernard uh, with the pronouns they, them. Um, and, uh, I am a land shark, uh, and for our viewers who can't see our lovely table with images of our characters, um, what, uh, that entails, I am an adorable cat, um, maybe like a Scottish fold, perhaps, uh, and I am wearing a, uh, shark costume, but it is also on backwards, um i'm trying really hard here looks like it's biting your butt yeah <laughs> so it's uh it's face is by my feet and it's uh tail is basically on my head uh my job is uh or my task that i've chosen for myself is to patrol for weak and injured animals to help them get the aid they need um, kind of like a search and rescue or a game warden. Um, and I have a like big first aid kit, like kind of a, like an oversized fanny pack, um, that has all sorts of like search and rescue kind of stuff in it. Um, 
and I wear it as a belt on my cat self. So it looks like it's a collar on my shark self, kind of like those rescue St. <laughs> Bernards. Um, I love it. <laughs> and, um, I am, um, I chosen the die of the mover, uh, like transporting people to safety and such. Um, yeah. Quick question. Does everyone currently know each other? Oh, I think it's more fun if we all start, yeah, having be, be, being friends already. Yeah. It just makes it a lot easier. Especially yeah, in a so, one shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So right now, we are opening to uh, it is nighttime. The moon is cresting over the mountains of Twilight Peaks. Uh, your gaze wanders to the western part of the sky where you can see the bright neon lights coming from Oasis City. Um, you can slightly hear the rippling sound of the river that leads to Rivervale. And uh, as you look towards those sounds, you can see the peaks of the tall redwoods and other trees in Sherwood. Uh, where you stand right now, uh, you're standing in front of a giant statue. This statue is uh, a big boulder with four swords that are forged into the rock. And on the hilt of all four of these swords uh, represent four different regions in this world. And where you are is in the center uh, a venture village. Next to it, you see a small but slender frog who is wearing a life vest. Um, you know him as venture leader Robert from Rivervale. Um, he is uh, here to present a an annual festival and celebration of uh, the Venture Society. Uh, you are all currently in a line getting ready to register to become Venture Society members. And there is a long line of all different types of groups of animals. Um, they're all, some of them look a little nervous. Uh, some of them look excited. There's a whole bunch of range of emotions going on right now. What are you all feeling? Well, I, I'm feeling pretty comfortable because I I flew two of my friends here from the farm, um, Millie and uh, and Joseph, and their their son is his first year uh, being being the Venture Society, so they've they've been telling me all about it, and so they're they're up ahead up there. So I, I'm feeling pretty comfortable about it. I'm feeling really excited. I know so many people here. Um, how, how about you guys? Are you, how you feeling? I feel hungry. <laughs> when you say that, what side of you, uh, uh, which end of you is saying it? <laughs> um, I like, I kind of feel it throughout my whole body, sure. you know, oh, okay. like it's a deep hunger. Like yeah. it's a, like, like, like maybe I'm hungry for food, but maybe I'm also hungry for action. Mm. <laughs> And I've been standing in this line. So, yeah, you know, this... sharks always have to keep moving. So you kind of see me wiggling. Like There's that. a few people behind you that mm -hmm. look a little frightened, but a few people in front of you that are just like, so cute. <laughs> <laughs> and a yeah. Buckminster has his arms crossed and he's kind of tapping his foot a little bit. He's saying, I wish they would hurry up. There's work to be done. I have three repairs that I have to make, and I'm standing in line here for this thing. Um, I, I mean, I guess it's important to everyone else, but I'd really rather be working. I think uh, Quinn's just very excited and looking at all the people. Uh, can't wait to, to get through the line. <laughs> 
So uh, as time goes by and some of these energies are flowing through us, uh, we get closer to the front and uh, a person, uh, an animal, uh, you see uh, Leonidas. He is uh, a very uh, large lion who is a venture leader. And he is one of like the, the head venture leaders uh, of this time period. And he looks at you and all says, so um, do you all have your requirements? Um, something helpful you do, uh, an item to carry, and the will to help others. Oh, yes, definitely. I'm ready. Oh, a little more enthusiasm for, <laughs> for Venture Society members, maybe? Um, and so Bernard's gonna, like, go from going kind of, like, back and forth, which is making his shark backside looking like that, to just, like, shaking his head, like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, so which side are you are you facing right now? Is this the whale? Oh, so the, the cat side is facing... Yeah, yeah. So uh -oh. you see Leonidas, like, his eyes just get really big. And he's just like... Oh, so cute. <laughs> and I think that maybe um, I'm like shaking the top half of my body so much that I go down on all fours. So like from up above, all you see is the the shark part. This, and yeah. like... you, all of a sudden uh, on screen, you just see a fin pop up and like you, you see a, a startled Leonidas like, where'd the cat go? <laughs> <laughs> and um i'm just so excited about adventure village that um i just start like circling like i'm going after my tail shark <laughs> yeah shark circling <laughs> yeah. i love this imagery uh leonidas hands you a um a envelope and he says don't open it until after uh, Robert gives his speech. Um, and so for uh, Bernard, he's going to grab the envelope by kind of like flapping like the the back half of him up. So like the, the shark um, top comes up and kind of swallows the, the envelope. <laughs> and then I'm going to kind of get out of the way. Is this one envelope for all four of us or each of us are getting an envelope? Uh, all of you are getting an envelope, but you all are part of the same team. Mm. Okay. okay, got it. Um, <laughs> as you step away from uh, the desk, you see Robert is getting ready to like give a little speech. Um, and there are a lot of, just, just a, a a small crowd of would-be Venture Society members. And outside of that circle are, is a large crowd from all different animals from everywhere else, uh, all here to uh, bring their, their younger ones to uh, join the Venture Society. And some, of, some are a little older, uh, depending on, on the group of ages, but the, mostly everyone here is younger. You see uh, Robert <clears throat> uh, many years ago, this region of ours used to be at war. Thankfully, peace was found by a few brave animals from each region. They threw down their weapons in the name of peace. And on that day, they formed the Venture Society to ensure a war like that never happen again. Tonight, we celebrate this momentous occasion by inducting our newest recruits. Uh, you see like some of the animals are stomping, some of the animals are like wagging tails and some of them are like howling to this. Uh, Tonight is a tradition set many years ago 
to give our new recruits their first assignment in the venture society. They will be accompanied by a junior venture leader to give guidance if they are needed. Every group should have their envelope with their assigned venture leader and their assignment they must complete. Oh. Everyone, venture! And he like jumps up in the air, like above this statue and everyone like jumps up and, and says venture. Um, what do you all do? I mean, I jump up and yell jump venture. And, yeah. I was yell down venture. there yeah. actually yell venture and then I was like, are we doing this? <laughs> um, I looked at my friends I, and they didn't do it. So I was like, let's see what we're doing. Venture. Uh, I will jump up uh, so the shark side is upwards. Yes. <laughs> like it's like jumping yeah. out of the sea of people. I love it. I do a little fly around. Just it, little... It's just like an, a half a second off. So after everyone jumps up and comes down, you just see a shark jump up. Because <laughs> <laughs> there was a wave. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you guys open your letters? Uh, we each have an individual letter, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to kind of like, almost like he's regurgitating. Uh, my shark self is uh, regurgitating it back out, and then I I grab it, and it's it's a little crumpled, but yeah, and then I'll open it. Are we gonna open them all at the same time, guys? One. Yeah, let's find out. Two, three. <laughs> and and I, and I like I have like two big buck teeth, right? And I use that as like a letter opener, right? I like nice. run it across right. my teeth, and that that opens it right up. <laughs> and then I like. Nice. I got the beak in there. Mm -hmm. I rip uh -huh. the envelope to shreds, um, and then there's missing pieces in the the main letter. <laughs> <laughs> nom 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 nom. <laughs> so, uh, Bernard, as you start to uh, read yours, it says uh, Sherwood leader talk like there's a bunch of pieces like <laughs> like shark teeth missing yeah, little, uh pieces yeah. or... <laughs> but everyone else what you see is uh your assignment is the hauntings of shorewood and uh you see that your venture leader is talk and talk you know uh is from uh sherwood as well uh after everyone starts to open up their letters, uh, you see people like animals. Now, they're now like wandering around, like trying to find their their junior venture leaders. Um, Do we know what kind of animal Tok is? Tok is a meerkat. Oh, <gasps> there we go. Oh, we've got oh. an in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Not all meerkats know all other meerkats. <laughs> True. But we have something in common. Yes, that's what I mean. That's true. Sitting uh, next to one of the tables in the front, you see Tak, who is uh, chowing down on a, a piece of like what looks like a, a very yummy, like sticky bun, and just like going to town on this little thing. Um, he looks like he's like nervously eating though, because he's like kind of like like really into it, but like, doesn't look like he's enjoying himself as much as he probably should be. <laughs> um, the cat side of me, the eyes are getting really big because I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Ethan, you're the best at making introductions. Introduce us. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, you probably met talk before, but just in case, I'll just reintroduce everybody. Hey buddy, uh, hey talk. <laughs> Talk over here. Uh, hi, hi, hey, uh, uh, are you are you assigned to me? Yeah, that's the letter mm -hmm. said. You know, you know, you know, uh, Bernard here and uh, Quinn, you know, uh, Laquin, and you know Buckminster. You've met them before, right, yeah. everybody? Yeah. Um. Hey, hey, everyone. I'm I'm sorry. I'm just I'm, I'm a little nervous. This is my first time being. Uh, a junior venture leader and I, I just graduated and this is my first assignment and they gave me the most scariest one ever 
A haunting of Sherwood? I heard of the rumors, but oh my goodness. It's okay. We don't know what we're doing either. <laughs> you know, when I saw haunting, I thought maybe that was an adventurous term. So you mean like haunting, haunting, like, like ghosts. Like haunting. actual ghosts? Like haunting. That's what some of the animals were saying, that, that they were in the woods, in, in Sherwood, and and they heard sounds and, and and someone telling them to get out, and, and there was lots of fog. It, it was scary. I don't know. Most haunted, ha- most haunted houses, and Buckminster makes like air quotes <laughs> with it, most haunted houses are just not built that well and like they make noises because they're shifting around and stuff and like with a few nails and some you know and some good lumber you can fix what sounds like a haunted house maybe that's what we can do now is, is that true and, i mean and, i think so well one way or another um you you've got a land shark on your team and i go on all fours and i'm like running around in all sorts of directions like a, uh and like and i'm big and scary and so maybe maybe whatever's haunting will uh if, if you think you're scared of the the haunting just wait till they get a load of me and i'm just like running around while i'm or like, like yeah that's yelling right. this and yeah you know, like <laughs> i've got a pretty high like high-pitched voice but i'm trying really hard to sound like tough and gruff yes. and, and and you're Sharks already are definitely scarier than ghosts yeah yeah well except if you know Bernard, not very scary. Uh, but you're already you're already like on the first step to being ready to go. You should never start an adventure with on an empty stomach. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Um, and I Bernard's have... gonna Bernard's gonna run up to um, Quinn and be like, that that is very important. Um, <laughs> Buckminster walks up to the table and says, oh, they have cedar chips. <laughs> like big, you know, like, like yeah, little yeah. splinters are flying out as you he's numbing down on the cedar chips. Yeah. And everyone give me a heart roll. It sounds like you're all trying to comfort talk here. Yes. Six. Six. Four. I got four as well. All right. So uh, you see Tuck kind of like come over to 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 Quinn and says, uh, "I, you know, I'm always kind of scared in these newer situations, but um, good thing I brought these these very comforting and like pulls out a, a sack." that is just full of like sticky buns this is my comfort food (laughs) (laughs) and like pulls another big like huge sticky bun out (sighs) the inside of that sack has got to be like (laughs) very (laughs) gross it's like a burlap sack and it looks like it's like kind of is there like uh, some like stuff oozing out greasy like stains on it (laughs) And Tuck kind of looks at at, um, at Bernard and goes, uh, w- w- would you like one? And uh, Bernard comes right up, like maybe like a little too close um, for, for comfort, but it's the cat side. And is like, uh, absolutely. And then without using my little cat paws at all, I just like while you're holding it, mm-hmm. I just start. And then wherever you drop it, I just follow. <laughs> I, I think it like kind of drops and kind of like a wheelbarrow kind of like rolls like slightly. <laughs> and I just like follow it as yeah. I'm like. <laughs> uh, Tox says, we're going to head out tomorrow to Sherwood, but um. In, in the meantime, maybe, maybe we could do something to make me feel a little better. Um, I, I we could I go for a swim. That always makes me feel better. Oh, hmm. Hmm. well, and um, so Bernard, who is like covered in sticky bun bits, <laughs> over, is like I may be a land shark, um, but I, 
I love a good swim. <laughs> and I'm like still. Do do any of you have a pool? I do. My whole my house is surrounded by a huge pool. Ooh. Oh. I made one myself when I dammed up the stream. Oh, it, it's like, nice. There's fish and everything in it. Party at Buckminster's well, house. Yes. 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 Let's party. do it. Uh, so like talks like follow uh, follow the leader. Follow the bunk monster. And I will start, I will start, you know, kind of marching, marching down and, uh, uh, you know, this kind of, we go into, into, into town and maybe down the hill a little bit. And, you know, there's the, like the pond that's formed by my very carefully constructed beaver dam with my, you know, little hutch in the middle there. And there's a nice, you know, pond that I've made that has a, you know, maybe I've, 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 I've actually like cleared away a little beach on one side of it so that, uh, uh, you know, everybody knows they can come swimming in my pond whenever they want to. So, I, yeah. I imagine like this troop of animals and you see talk in the, in the background with his, his banner uh, flying the, uh, the venture society flag, kind of like marching. Having yeah. And time. like my best friend, Oliver, who's an otter, he's the lifeguard. I built him a little chair nice. and he sits there with some binoculars and he watches to make sure that everybody is safe when they're swimming. And you see uh, Bernard, uh, in the distance, you see like a little like paw. What what kind of animal is is uh, Bernard? Um. Wait, what? Uh, what kind yeah. of animal, Bernard? Like, it, I'm well, I'm a land shark. Sorry, shark. Yeah, land mm -hmm. shark. Um, but uh, mm -hmm. I am like a, a Scottish fold inside the um, Scottish fold cat inside the uh, shark costume. Uh, the closer you get, what is the first thing that everyone sees that grabs your eye here? What's something interesting you find here? I think it'd be helpful if you cue us to so that we know so that we're not like talking over each other. Just let us know when yeah. to, when to go. Uh, we'll start with Ethan. Yeah, um, I'm kind of flying, like kind of just above everyone. So I've got I've got the first view um, because I've I've got the you know, the hawk eyes, and you know I spot it and I see what what I think is like a, like a windsock or something. I'm like, oh, it's something bright, it's red or orange, and I'm excited because I'm thinking airfield. That's what I work in. I love it, you know. So I'm like, do you have, do you have like, like an airport or like. Do birds land here and and i'm like asking you kind of as i'm going it kind of looks like that's a, is that a windsock up there on top of is that a life god stand is that a tower so i'm kind of just like as we go i'm at, i'm trying to kind of randomly rambling to you um bunkminster to be like what do you have what's that bright thing on top of that tower and buckminster what is something you're proud of to show off here Oh, um, I think the thing that I am, the thing that I am most proud of, what is the thing that I am most proud of? Oh, um, uh, it's um, uh, that I have, the thing that I'm most proud of is that like, I have carefully graded the ground, like, like, you know, the, the, like under the pond so that it goes in a nice, even depth right down to where it just gets up to your chin. You know, but there, there's like, there's no sudden drop offs. Everybody knows exactly how far they can go, you know. Um, and so, and I've got little buoys set up to tell, to tell you it's two feet here and three feet here and four feet here. Um, I, and yeah. And, and it's, I, I and like it's, it. And like, I spend a lot of time swimming around underneath there, you know, raking it and making sure everything is perfect. Yeah. I feel like, uh, I would like to add to this a little bit, like some of the animals that do come here, they'll leave little figurines. So like, if you're a mouse, you can go here. Sure. If you're a meerkat, you can go here. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, no, little, uh, little uh, 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 carved uh, uh, statues yeah. or something next yeah. to the buoys. That's great. Maybe they're the little, like little floating thing. Oh, they could be made out of, if they're made out of wood. And they attach and float. Yeah, them. they can float. Like little, little things on the on the rope. Yeah. Yes, yeah. nice. Uh, Quinn, what is something that catches your eye here? I think that I see some berry bushes that I'm mm. very excited about. The berries, and they look very ripe. And no one. What kind of berries? Hmm. 
I'm going to say I'm very hungry after all the food we've been talking about in this game. And I want some Alala berries. <gasps> mm. And Bernard, what is something that catches your eye? Um, so it looks like there was is maybe an area on the beach um, for some some bonfires. And um, being a land shark, uh, my favorite sort of space between the land and the the ocean uh, is being able to be on the beach and be nice and cozy and warm. So I'm very excited about the potential for that. Um, but in the meantime, I will want to go like crashing right into the water. Uh, <laughs> but I will give, elaborate give, on that maybe later. <laughs> give me a move roll. Okay. Five. All right. So uh, what does this look like? Um, so, um, I just, like, as, as I see the beach, um, I'll sort of run up and, uh, be like, oh, cool, and I'll run towards the, um, bonfire pit, and I'll, like, run some circles around it to, like, make sure it's what I thought it was, and then I'll kind of run diagonally across to the other side of the beach and then like make a make a sharp turn and then go crashing through so that I'm I'm still in the shallow end because I'm I'm like all on all fours. Um uh and then there's just like a giant like wake uh as I go into the water. Uh, uh, and I, I oh go sorry. ahead please finish up. and it, it looks like the shark is going in backwards so it makes me <laughs> more of a like a splatter because it's the non like water dynamic instead of aerodynamic <laughs> like, i don't know the word for that but it's the new word for it Hy hydro <laughs> hydro dynamic there yeah. we go yeah, yeah. yeah. i love that we have the only beach where everyone goes yay there's a shark in the water and then, <laughs> like everybody goes into the water instead of the other way around yeah, you see, you see, Top goes perfect ten, and then runs and and does a cannonball like right after you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do think that uh, even though like that's a that's a success, um, that Bernard will realize that like that's actually about as much water as Bernard wants to have to do with, and so goes and like goes into the warm sand and uh starts trying to like lick off the the water things <laughs> right <laughs> uh talk is having a, a a good time right now it looks like talk is starting to relax a little bit like being able to unwind and not worry about having to go on this adventure um what are you all doing Well, Ethan doesn't really like the water that much. Um, I like being near the water, but I don't necessarily like being in the water. So I'm just kind of like, keep a tab, he's kind of circling, and then I'm, it might see somebody kind of like throw a ball and I can like hit the beak with the beef, belt with the ball. Uh, I'll, you know, go grab someone a towel. Uh, you know, I'm doing these kind of things and I'm just kind of circling and kind of hanging out um, above the water. And then occasionally let's kind of like, chilling out on the beach and just kind of walking around. Ethan, give me a, a move roll. Five. Five. Uh, yeah, you just, yeah. all of a sudden you just see Ethan like swoop around and grab a ball with their beak uh, right before it like lands and splashes everyone in the water and then like <laughs> lands on top of the, the lifeguard uh, uh, chair. Uh, Buckmeister, what are you doing? Oh, um, uh, once I'm in the water and everybody is having fun, um, I'm going to, um, uh, I like, I like splash fights because I'm really good at splash fights because I have that big tail that I can, mm -hmm. psh, you know, like, like, like a wave. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So I think I'm going to, I'm just going to have fun, um, uh, uh, you know, splashing around and specifically like I want, um, 
uh, uh, talk to have fun. And I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get out there with him and say, see, isn't this great? I told you that whenever I feel bad, I go for a swim. Um, and, um, the fact that, and, and even I'm like, I don't seem as worried that there's work to do because I'm, I really like this. Like my favorite thing to do is to go for a swim with my friends. So, so you, I, this sounds like it's a heart roll. And I feel like you have advantage here because this is your home and yeah. you, feel, you really want to like make talk feel comfortable mm -hmm. and relax right now. Mm -hmm. So heart, so I'm only rolling a D6 because I'm a mover. That's not usually my thing, but but I, I, I do want my friend to have fun and I'm very proud of my punt. So that's, so I feel like that's, that's important too. So yeah. uh, I'm gonna roll 2D6. Yep. I got a one and a five. So that five means that I'm going to make that roll. You do. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Tuck is, so at first Tuck is like using his tiny arms to try and like splash at you. And then you come in and make this giant, it almost like, it's like a wave pool at this yes. moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and Tuck is just having a good time, just like waving in the pool as the waves are coming by. <laughs> Um, I think the Bernard's um, after after getting a towel from Ethan, who kindly brought them one. Um, thank you, and um, is gonna kind of now be standing up, and um, I'll I'll kind of be imitating Ethan with the towel, using it like it's wings, wings. and I'm gonna be <laughs> running. <laughs> <laughs> uh toward like uh i'm gonna be as the waves come in and out i'm gonna run in and out um chasing the waves or letting them chase me and nice i i love it um and quinn what are you doing i think quinn is trying to gather some of those berries to make people a snack because it's a myth you should not eat before you get in the pool but everybody's already in the pool so <laughs> we need a snack after we've worked up the energy, like we used up our energy and worked up an appetite. This sounds like a heart roll. Give me a heart roll. All right. Sounds like you're trying to make everyone feel good right now. That's a five. It's a five. So that's a success. What, what are you making? What is this dessert? I don't see... I can't bake anything right now because we're outside, but I feel like I'm making some kind of like berry, like a fruit salad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And some of my favorite spices, it's like some sugar. And, I got a sugar and cinnamon like uh, little thing to put on top of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yum. Yeah. Nom, 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 nom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the night goes by and everyone's having a, a good time, kind of like just having, like, it feels like you're just relaxing for the day and talk kind of like uh, comes over to, to you, Buckmeister, and says, do you, do you mind if we have like a, a sleepover tonight? And and then maybe tomorrow we can all go together to, to share wood and, and go take care of that haunting. No, that would be super fun. I'll go into my... I'll go into my lodge that's because that's what I call my house. That's what people just call their houses as lodges. So I'll go into my lodge and I'll get my sleeping bag and I'll bring it out here. In fact, I should have sleeping bags for everybody. I think I've got one, two, three, four, five. Yes, I have five sleeping bags. I'll go get sleeping bags and I'll bring them out and we can all sleep on the beach with the fire. And um, Ethan tells really good campfire stories. Oh, I, I don't know if I need one. And you see Tuck like dig a hole and then kind of plop down into it with his head <laughs> just sticking out. <laughs> um, uh, and and I kind of like raise an eyebrow and say, okay, well, it's not really a sleepover if everyone doesn't have sleeping oh. bags, but okay. okay. No, no, I'll take one. I'll take one. <laughs> and, and so I say, I'll be right back. And I dive into the water, swim over, and I'm going to come back with, um, uh, with some sleeping bags. Nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I, I can do a thing, I can do a thing where like I swim just with my tail and my yeah. tail propels us, and I can kind of hold stuff up like this. Oh, and Ethan can help me because Ethan can grab stuff and and fly yeah. it over too, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, what, it's, what, is, what does this look like? I want to, I want to, I want to imagine this, uh, this imagery here. It's five, right? Okay, so how are, do the, you are the sleeping that? bags wet or <laughs> no, no, everything, no, no, the inside of my lodge is. Inside okay. lodge is bone dry. I take great pride in that, in in my ability to shore it up so that nothing gets wet on the inside. 
Oh, okay, so you have a different entrance that lets you bring it back. Yes, okay. yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I guess Ethan's got one, maybe two sleeping bags maximum. I could try two uh, <laughs> with my with my talons. Um, if you can get three, I can I can try to I can get two. What do you think? I'm gonna try that. Um. Yeah. Sure. All yeah. right. Give me some move rolls. Move rolls. Yeah. Drop that one more. Six. Um. I also think that. Um, Bernard, well, go ahead and resolve your rolls. I I did not succeed. I've got a four, so I'm good. Okay. okay. So, um, um, and Bernard may see some struggling going on, whatever that might look like when you resolve it. Um, but uh, I'll be like, like I can help, and like going splashing into the water after um, <laughs> Buckminster. So- you see uh ethan is flying above the water right now and is struggling because is uh, like a gust of wind comes by and is having a hard time like what does it look like having a hard time to hold these and like about yeah. to drop them yeah and i've got like i've got my wings but i'm like i'm trying to shield the the wind from uh, hitting the actual uh weight of the of the sleeping bags um but it's it's too much and it's it's pushing me this way and it's pushing me that way and, and i've got the one in my left is like pretty secure but the one in my right i just can't i keep almost dropping it, it um so maybe i yell even like like bernard like, bernard, un- bernard like can, can it sh- <laughs> <laughs> maybe it even kind of like yeah. unrolls a little bit like you yeah. know when you tie it and but it comes yeah. out the side what you realize ethan is that uh, Buckmeister, this one wasn't a uh, a sleeping bag. It was a weighted blanket. So it was much heavier. <laughs> no wonder I couldn't carry it. <laughs> um, Bernard, how do you help? Um, so I'm, I'm basically going to like go and kind of running on my... Um, on two legs in the the water trying to like reach up and grab the other end of it um so that i can either help support or like catch it if he if ethan drops it um should i should i roll for something or yeah I... give me a, give me i kind of feel like if i'm still got it and you're just basically holding the bottom of the weight a weighted blanket we might be able to do this i don't I, know i'm I'm gonna give you advantage on this because uh ethan is just barely holding on to it which is good because my first roll was a two <laughs> 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 so let's see one way or another it'll be fun it's a three nice let's, let's so see. yeah you're you're able to like just barely like you're you're doing um, <laughs> unfortunately you're doing the doggy paddle like kind of <laughs> like trying to like like scurry it over and it looks real awkward because the cat shark is doing the doggy paddle (laughs) (laughs) yeah backwards um and i i think that like as we get it like since i'm i'm able to succeed but not that well um i think it as we get to the shallower area um between like the wind pulling you and the weight coming this way and like me holding on to the bottom it kind of drag like we kind of fumbly get it towards the the edge of the shore and then um i i end up falling over which like pulls it down um but i'm holding my arms up so as like i fall onto the beach where the um like the very shallow shallow is like the the weighted blanket falls just past like where the where the <laughs> water comes up um and then i'm holding where okay. i'm like in the water i'm holding I, it up i imagine this there's like a gust of that gust of wind that comes by is almost makes this like a sail and kind of like <laughs> lifts you up out of the water at the very like at where where you're right like barely able to stand there <laughs> yeah and it just kind of like it. lifts you up <laughs> yes <laughs> This is great. Um, you spend. Thank the rest you for of letting me help you, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Quinn has laid out a a bunch of like fruit salads, um, and everyone is just having a good time. Um, and as the night goes by, uh, you start to see the like the aurora borealis, like lights above twilight peaks, kind of just dancing along as everyone starts to uh, to fall asleep. Um, the next morning. Talk is up, bright and chipper. Hey, hey guys, it, is, is everyone ready? I, I feel a lot more confident in, in, in being able to do this. Uh, but is everyone awake? Hello? What time is it? <laughs> oh, um, the sun just came up. So, uh... Boom. Yeah, it's, it's dawn. It's time to get going. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but Buckminster's like up and, you know, <laughs> and ready to go like like you know chipper and, right away. and bright eyed mm -hmm. he's like oh. he, he's like neatly already like neatly rolled up his sleeping bag and tied it you know, little, you know tied, tied tied the tie off um it's the precise kind of person that bernard is like uh why <laughs> <laughs> um but bernard like it's still since it's so early dawn I, like haven't had time to like lay in the sun and and warm up and everything so i'm gonna kind of groan like isn't it better for hauntings to do this at night <laughs> oh no it's much better for us to do it during the day because then it won't be as so scary <laughs> well i guess i guess if i guess if quinn wants to sleep some more um I'll make breakfast. Oh, Bernard. Bernard. Oh, Bernard. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I guess if, uh, 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 oh, sorry. Quinn, are you awake? Mm -hmm. I think I'm awake. I'm more awake than Bernard. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah. So then I'll say, Quinn, can you make us breakfast? Oh yeah. That's something I can do. That's important. That's the best way to start the day is with a good breakfast. And we can't mm -hmm. go on an adventure without food in our stomachs. <laughs> true. Very true. I can help with some sticky buns. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Bernard's gonna uh, also mumble and snacks for the trip. <laughs> <laughs> As I like slowly like crawl across the sand to find like the warmest spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, uh, Ethan will help, I guess, uh, get, the, get all of the um, campsite cleaned up uh, kind of like you know, putting putting the sleeping bags away, like making sure all the other things are put put away while uh while the food's being made, and you know, I I only need you know maybe that that first few minutes to wake up. So now I'm like chatty, I'm like ready to go, I'm like looking forward to it, and a lot less scared now that we're going during the day. <laughs> uh Talk is also helping like roll up the the bed rolls and stuff and like uh putting some plates out ready for like Quinn, like eagerly waiting for Quinn to make something. Ah, uh, yeah. I think Quinn is gonna use some more of those berries and like make a oatmeal with with berries mm. in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you, you have the bonfire there too. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not even gonna make you roll for it. You you <laughs> make this like this beautiful oatmeal with these berries uh it's very colorful like swirl like there's swirls mm -hmm. of the berry juice in it and uh it is probably the most delicious and i'm oatmeal sure you've ever it, had. it pairs perfectly with the cinnamon buns <laughs> the sticky buns <laughs> the sticky buns yeah got a carbo load before we you, you do see all this work. <laughs> you see talk just taking the the sticky bun and dunking it in the oatmeal like if it were coffee and no 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 <laughs> So uh, weirdly, during breakfast, um, Bernard has left the shark sun, uh, the shark suit in the sun because um, it's a little bit damp still, <laughs> <laughs> and is a little floofed and like slightly damp and and grizzled this morning, um, but just like takes a a bowl of oatmeal and slides it close and grabs a sticky bun. And it's like the like nom nom nom, but in like super slow motion. <laughs> this is the first time Tok has ever seen you outside of your 
your shark <laughs> skin. Yeah. And uh, Tuck is like, I thought you were just a cat shark. I'm a I'm a land shark. Oh, I'm sorry, land shark. Yeah. What do you look like outside of uh, of your your shark skin? Um. Right now, I'm particularly tired. Like it's it's basically kind of like hat hair, but like all over. <laughs> That's what I would picture. At ears, yeah. You, you have the yeah. The, I mean, the Scottish folds already have their ears folded <laughs> over, so maybe they're even like a little bit more crinkled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Ethan Ethan notices that you know uh, this is sitting there uh, the damp uh, suit, and it's like. Hey Bernard, I I can get this dried really quick if you want me to just go fly it around in circles up in the air. I can get this nice and dry for you in the next I don't know minute, two minutes. Oh, that'd be great. I I do feel a little bit naked. Um, Ethan, give me uh give me a quick move roll. Let's see how quickly we could dry this off. Uh, seven. So that's not. Oh, that's like you, you start to fly up and you like it's not a very windy day and it is kind of like a little bit of an overcast like it's not like looks like it's gonna rain but the sun isn't like super bright today so the your your shark uh, skin is still a little damp when you get it back mm. I mean, it's kind of kind of awkward <laughs> itchy or yeah yeah full of sand <laughs> Yeah, it was like kind of hard to put back in. Get that 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 uh, sandpaper a little bit of uh, the sand going in. So um, I might kind of wander over to where Ethan uh, has it, and uh, I kind of like look up at the the overcast, and it's like, yeah, it wasn't really in the the cards. Um, but can you can you hold this, and while you uh if you agree to hold it up sure, yeah. um then uh i'll grab some from the kindling or the wood near the the bonfire um i'll kind of set up a little almost like a little clothesline just for the shark suit and have it so it can dry by the bonfire while we finish eating up Everybody nice good? So uh, after you guys are all done eating and, and uh, kind of cleaning up, you start to make your way to Sherwood. And normally this trek is kind of dark at night. It's kind of spooky even. In, uh, in the nighttime, there's usually a lot of fog on uh, and moisture from the mountains and it's the same at, in the morning there's just like the floor of sherwood is kind of covered in this like almost like mist from the morning dew it kind of like dances across like the the floor of of sherwood and um since there's an overcast sherwood has lots of trees uh, you're all from Venser Village, so you don't go to Sherwood that often, but sometimes you do. Uh, but you don't go to the forest that much. You go more towards the the, the town proper. Uh, entering the forest itself, there's this mist that dances. Light kind of is, there's beams of light that shine through uh, at times from when the, the trees are kind of like swaying with the wind. And as you get closer to entering into the forest, you see that uh, there are some lights kind of floating and moving closer and closer to you. And it seems like they're moving very fast and it's kind of confusing of what they are or why they're there or what is going on. And it kind of is a little spooky. Um, let's see, I, um, Bernard, so, um, today at breakfast, um, Bernard actually, um, was able to wake up enough to put the shark suit on the, you know, correct way. Um, <laughs> and so, 
the 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 mouth is kind of like a hood over my head mm -hmm. and i still have, the arms go through the same holes and then the big hole that my face was in is where my feet come out and the tail kind of drags behind a little bit um but i think i'm gonna be like i'm a little bit scared but i'm also like very excited because it's shiny and new um <laughs> and so um i'm gonna kind of um kind of like momentarily tap talk on the uh shoulder and and as i move past and be like i got this and <laughs> i'm just kind of like i'm all full of like nerves but um the excitement sort of overwhelms yeah. and i go up to the light um when you get closer like you like go out in front and the lights it's almost like the lights if it, like imagine a cartoon where someone's like running real fast and they like put their heels into the ground and like you see like uh some some dust kind of come up that's what happens with the mist like you see these lights come up real fast and then out of like uh the uh, they stop all of a sudden right in front of you and you see the mist kind of like poof up in front of you and almost like mushroom out and uh, in front of you are a bunch of fireflies. Oh, oh, did you hear it? Did you hear the voice? It's scary. We're, we're moving. We're moving from Sherwood. I said, this is the last time I'm going to have a spooky voice in here trying to scare me out of my home. Um, And I think Bernard's going to immediately, just out of fascination, like find like the one that, like the one that was talking and yeah. little cat paws out and i'll put the my claws out not to hurt anyone but just to like have more more room for them and be and be like it's okay i got you uh what what's going on give me a heart roll okay or I, I, i'll argue the point that this could be a words roll as well whatever one you think is appropriate here well, uh, I got a three. So, <laughs> so neither one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you go, uh, what, what is it you said? You... Oh, uh, so I was like, I got gotcha. you. Um, I got gotcha. you. And they, and they just see like claws come out. <laughs> it's like a misunderstanding. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A misunderstanding uh, all, of the all way. All you see now, like fireflies <laughs> just like going everywhere. I told you we need to get out of here. And I feel like the rest of us maybe like are saw what, what maybe the fireflies were seeing and maybe uh, Bernard didn't realize that. So as a talker, I kind of come in to like defuse, try to defuse the situation. So I would like to go <laughs> like kind of fly in and be like, wait, 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 wait. We're, we're friendly. Uh, sorry to scare you. Uh, you know, something like that. Um, and, and try to like, get them to stop to continue to talk to us to find out what they know. Um, so Tell them we're from the Venture Society. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like we're from the Venture Society. We're sorry if we scared you. So give me a uh, a talk roll. And okay. since like Buckmeister was like, hey, I have this good idea of saying we're from the Venture Society, right? And everyone knows but, the Venture yeah. Society being helpful. I'll give you advantage on this. Uh, I got a one on the first roll. And a six. So I think a six is success. Success. Yes. Yes. Advantage for brand recognition. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so uh, they all kind of like, they're all like swarming around everyone kind of like frantically. And then as you're like talking to them, they're all starting to slow down and like kind of like almost like a cloud kind of like all talking at once. Uh, uh, they sense... They sent some animals from the Venture Society. Oh, oh are you here to help? Yes, we're oh, here yeah. to help. <laughs> and oh. um, Bernard is like no longer talking and has I had I I kind of try to put my paws behind me, but it doesn't quite fit because my shark costume is so big, so they're just kind of backwards to the side. <laughs> kind of like being a little sheepish. Yeah. yeah. Um. All of them are are kind of floating around, and they go. There, there was a there was a voice in the woods. 
and they told us, they said, hello, who are you? And started yelling at us and telling us to get out. And, and I, we were scared. We didn't know what to do. And and we just kind of, we all, we all just left because I didn't know what else to do. Um, I do think that Bernard will, um, trying to help again, uh, will sheepishly ask, well, who are you? <laughs> so we'll kind of like scurry for a minute and realize that you, you, uh, you were the one who did it. Cause they, they're having almost like a flashback of like what just happened. Um, and they still, um, I was just trying to get the question right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. My name is Flicker, and this is my family. Like, hi, Flicker. <laughs> hi, everybody. Nice and, like, to meet I'm... you and your family. <laughs> uh, and like, it, it was almost like a cacophony of like, hello, like everyone, like at the same time, like all saying hello, all of these fireflies. <sighs> I'm going to take everyone out to go on a little uh, fly by Venture Village. Do you think you can go check it out for me? Absolutely. That's, That's what we're, we're here to do. <laughs> yeah. Which direction was that noise? Uh, they all shape like an arrow, like out of the <laughs> fireflies in, in a direction that's like deeper into the woods and like kind of off to the right. Um, and they all say kind of like, thank you at the same time and like flutter off like super fast. Um, the deeper you get into the forest and follow the, the trail to, to the right, you start to see a light kind of dancing uh, and you see there is a deer here who has large antlers uh, and on one of the antlers is this hanging lantern and he's like coming up uh, hello uh, my name my name is will i'm kind of lost and i keep hearing these voices they're coming from that grove in the back. Um, I'm kind of scared. Can can you help me? Yeah. Well, hi. Um, yeah, we're actually here to help um, about those scary voices. So don't worry. Um, I it it's a little. It, I I don't like to. Uh, admit this but I, I'm, I'm a big animal and i probably shouldn't be afraid of things like this but something like s yelled at me really loud and i got scared and i started running and i kind of got lost where I, where i was and and then i ended up in that groove over there and it sounded like the voices were coming from different directions i, I don't know and 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 the mist is so thick over there uh, and it the, the cover of the trees makes it dark and scary. I, I, just be careful when you go over there. I don't know who's there or what's there. A lot of people are saying that they're ghosts. Um, he kind of like leads you over to the grove and in the grove, uh, there is a clearing uh, that has mist kind of like dancing everywhere and you hear who are you? And Will just takes off. <laughs> We're um, here from the Venture Society. <laughs> I'm Bernard, the land shark. And as I do it, like the top part of the shark hood, just where the mouth is, is just like flopping. <laughs> Get out! And you hear like this like booming voice of like, get out! Or we will You hear a voice from the other side of, of the groove. Uh, uh we'll frighten you. Why? 
Buckminster, hear- Buckminster has a very dubious expression on his face. <laughs> like, kind of like, <laughs> I can already picture that this is what yes, your arms yeah, crossed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the arms crossed before at the party yeah. when I was like, nah, and he's kind of like, mm, why, he says. Uh, you hear some, like, sounds of, like, fluttering. And you hear from the other side, because we'll haunt you. Who we you are. Just- you already oh. said what you're gonna do. Why? <clears throat> yeah, you hear like some like grunting, and you hear, um, "We're tired of the animals littering our our forest and our our we're spooky spirits." Oh, littering? I mean, I don't like littering either, but. You don't have to go scaring people. We can just, we can just, you know what? I can just make some nice trash barrels for you that we could put by the side of the road. And then the venture side, you could come around and empty them out every now and then. And then there wouldn't be any more litter. Buckmeister, give me, uh, give me a talk roll. Okay. Uh, and a word and, roll, sorry. Okay, all right. Um, uh, we don't have any of our dice yet. Okay, all right, whatever help dice that I can spend. So, uh, I'll just go ahead and do that then. Um, uh, words is four, five, six, four, seven. seven. See what I four, well, five, six, seven. I, oh, I, I, I've only got a d6, so I'm not yeah. rolling a seven. Yeah, <laughs> but let's see, <laughs> I let's see what happens. <laughs> I roll a five, I made it. All right. Uh, you hear one of the voices go, see, I, I told you, if we just asked, they would help us. And, I, and I'm like, I'm, I, I like shrug and I nod and I'm like, yes, of course. That's what the Venture Society is for. You see some like fluttering of like wings up in, the, in a tree and uh, out from the other side of one of the like the, the branch around the branch, you see the nose of like, it's very bright, it has stripes and it's different varying colors. And at the very tip is like kind of like a blackish color. And you look awful parody for a ghost, I say. I'm a toucan, not a parrot. <laughs> I mean, oh no, I'm a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and Ethan, or, uh, Ethan's like, wait, I, I knew I heard that sound before. That's a flutter. Those are bird wings. You know, like that's mm-hmm. basically like it's just dawning on Ethan. Like, yeah. Like, and that oh, yeah, it's birds. Bird. <laughs> you hear from the other side now. Uh, I, he's a, a toucan, but I'm a ghost. And uh, <laughs> you hear like a, uh, get out. Like now, and, like the voice is changing. It's not as deep. It's it sounds like they are a little something's uh, something's off. So, um, I'm uh, gonna kind of like stand on my tippy toes and be like, "Well, ghosty, I'm a land shark." <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Give me a move roll. And I'm going to consider this you trying to be like big Big. and confident. Um, I got a four. How do you project confidence right now? Um, And like, what, what exactly are you trying to convey here with this action? Like, um, Basically, like the the being big and scary is a moot point because I'm also big and scary. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, so maybe I'll I'll add um, you know, so the well, I'm a land shark. Rawr! So maybe we can talk it out. <laughs> uh, and you you see, woo, and you see this head kind of like <laughs> shake around in like moving the the mist around and you see this like stark white uh owl kind of like uh land shark and (laughs) flutter down uh like kind of freaking out you said you're from the venture society can you help 
like talking to everyone else but but um uh our land shark so like wearing the land shark is not part of the venture society the, perhaps the, <laughs> but they're afraid the, <laughs> bernard, bernard here is also from the venture society we're yeah. here to help <laughs> and, Who? Uh, the land and shark I'll- Mm-hmm. And I'll I'll kind of point out to my my big uh, first aid bag, and and just be like, does anyone need any help? No. Oh. Well, animals keep littering in our home, and I I don't like it. I I just want them to stop. Well, Buckminster said that we could make some. He could make some trash cans. Well. We can also tell the people, the other animals, not to not to litter. Maybe they don't remember that people live here. <laughs> yeah, we can have an awareness campaign, mm-hmm. and I can I can run around, and I can I can let people know. And and Ethan, you're really good at talking to people. Yeah, I can spread the, the word. word out. I could spread the word, and I maybe a little sign we could put up. Uh, I could I could t- put take flyers around. I could have a bake uh, sale to ooh, r- raise money for signs there. and and the cans, the supplies yeah. for the cans. <laughs> mm-hmm. you, you just see this out like the owl is standing in the middle of everyone, and and, and their head just keeps spinning around in different directions, <laughs> like looking at person. everyone as they're talking, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and says. Oh, Everyone give me a words roll. I feel like everyone is kind of helping in here. Seven. Seven. I got a five. Four. Venture! Nice. (laughs) So, Fuckmeister, tell me how you succeed here and how everyone kind of helps out. I mean, I think that this is because like Buckminster's whole thing is like 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 planning stuff, right? And mm-hmm. building things that like he's already got his tool belt out thinking, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, and is like starting to, you know, go, well, we could use that tree right there and that's and we'll make that. And like he's already like, you know, he's like got a Planning screwdriver it out. out like a screwdriver out and he's cleared a little bit of ground and he's like scratching plans for it and showing, and you can do this and you can do that. Well, actually I'm not telling people, I'm asking people if they can do things. So like, Ethan, could you fly back to town and, you know, and, and talk, can you, you know, talk, you're our, you're our venture society captain. Can you make sure that this gets approved for us? And, you know, um, and like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Quinn, you can you um you know can you make the signs for us that 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 tell people what's what's happening and stuff like that, um, uh, uh and uh you know um uh, uh uh Bernard um uh we can use your picture to show people um uh, uh to show people how to do it right and stuff you know like for little diagrams or whatever and so just kind of you know like 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 this is doing stuff is what makes buckminster happy and now we have a plan and he's already getting started on it there's like a montage happening basically mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah we're we're gonna we're gonna close this out in a montage so like <laughs> what what does Ethan? What is Ethan doing, trying to help this whole situation as well? So, like, time? as you're um, kind of saying, we could use this. Could someone do this? And Ethan's like, oh, fly back to town, uh, and uh, maybe I say to talk, um, ask talk if you want a, a ride, because then you could go get get the approval, and I could go uh, spread the word into Venture Village and get some more papers and uh, and things. Um, so that's, what, that's kind of what my character's doing is, is, uh, you know, carrying you there and flying back and talk as you like pick up talk, he pulls out like a clipboard and is already writing up like a, 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 like permission, like slip pretty much like, can we get this approved? What does, what is Quinn doing in this montage as we exit? I, I think, you know, uh, Buckminster had the the suggestion of making the signs and I'm using my, my cake decorating my, my, my artistry skills to make these signs and make them look good. And maybe since we don't have a photographer right now, I'm, I'm drawing, uh, drawing Bernard in, in the, as a land shark. 
throwing things in in the garbage cans and all of that. Mm-hmm. Can you make me hovering the litter over the trash can? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Bernard, how what is your montage like? Um, so I think when I when I see talk take out the clipboard, um. I'm going to look up and at talk and be like, oh, man, you're so brave. That red tape is super scary. Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, then uh, I'm also, so, and, you know, and posing for, for Quinn for the, the drawings of the instructional materials. And um, I'm also going to ask our, uh, an, our owl friend, like, has, has anyone been hurt by the litter? And, you know, if anyone has run into some, like, soda can rings and stuff like that, then, you know, I can take out stuff in my first aid kit and get them all bandaged up. And, uh, yeah. And uh, I think Tuck's uh, wrap up here is going to be uh, congratulating everyone on a successful venture um and to close out venture society what we do is we celebrate each other's uh successes uh in the pillars of the venture society uh which are uh communication uh, emotional wellness personal strengths and social awareness do you think any of your other companions had marked any of things that would in company that well i was thinking right off the bat um that for self which is one of the harder ones to get anyone to do in these things uh mm-hmm. i think bernard did a really good job of like self self uh confidence and i uh, i reminding us of, it, of your identity and you know kind of standing up for yourself so i felt like there was a really good example of that uh principle of the adventure society throughout the whole adventure Thank you. I know land sharks get confused with tiger sharks a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> Jim, how about you? Oh, definitely. Um, uh, Ethan, like Ethan, was our communicator. Ethan was uh, definitely the one who kind of, you know, um, uh, ran point for us. And uh, the fact was, you know, kind of flitting around and uh, uh, talking to people for us. Definitely, communication was Ethan's strong point. I, I very much thought, yeah, yeah. And Quinn. Well, I was going to say, Laura. yeah, I was going to say uh, the same thing with the communication. And also, I mean, Buckminster did some good communicating too, coming yeah. up with that plan for the the garbage cans and getting people to throw their trash away instead of littering. Yeah, just real quick on that uh, uh, out of game. Tim and I have done this one before, so I was hanging back because I knew what mm-hmm. the thing was. But that was a very quick solution that when you did that, I was like, there's no reason for us to do more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> solution. That yep. was great. <laughs> I'm going to build some trash cans. Yeah. Sometimes it takes three or four interactions before we come to a solution. So I thought that was great. Well, th- they said littering and I'm like, what can I build to fix that problem? And there I was. thought that was so, great. Yeah. 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 And um, Nina. I want to say, um, actually, uh, self, for Quinn because, um, you know, when we were trying to enact that solution, um, you're really great at thinking about, even though you're a chef, um, how how you could use those same skills to help mm-hmm. in a completely different yeah. situation. Yeah. And so I think that that's not always easy because, yeah, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So thank you. I- Thanks for lending your skills out of uh, their normal place. I really appreciated uh, Buckmeister's like trying to put everyone at ease after hearing like a scary like venture was about to come up and saying, hey, can like let's go over my house and like have like relax and like have a little fun before we do this. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, great. thank you for a great scene. Thank you for playing a lot of fun. (laughs) And we have a few minutes. If everyone has any questions in the in the chat, uh, you can ask away, and um, we can answer some of those questions for you. Uh, and if not, we will start to close up in about three to four minutes.
Um, yeah, I thought, I thought that was good. Uh, I, I just kind of doing that. And as you can see, you know, um, probably didn't get going until about, I don't know, four ish until we got done with character creation or so. So, um, you know, these adventures are meant to be that like 30, you know, 45 an hour maximum. And, you know, uh, all of the adventures actually have like, um, tips to the GM because this game is not necessarily expecting that the person running this is a experienced GM. So it has tips on how you can maybe fast track something, maybe how you can explore something further. You don't have to go A, B, C, D. How can you do that? How can you let this fun thing that's happening just keep going, right? Like I'm sure for you, Tim, you weren't expecting that scene, but you were able to just let it go and find the right point. Yeah. We've got a lot of GM tips. So in, um, in all of the books and the adventure book, there's uh, Rickety the RPG Raccoon that gives you tips about GMing and role-playing. There's Education Elephant that gives like educators ways that they could put this into their class. And then there's Therapy Turtle that gives more like poignant notes about how they could be using this section or changing this to use it as a tool in therapy. So there's kind of these nice little um, behind the scenes notes that make it simpler to then reading an entirely huge book uh, to figure out how, how to run the game. Mm hmm. Uh, Renee in the chat says, I can't believe it's been two hours already. And that's two hours of us streaming. Like the, <laughs> the stream is actually live. We probably have only been playing in about an, a little over an hour. Um, right. And our introductions take a bit. So yeah. yeah. Renee's like, how, how it feels like <laughs> no time, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Good. It, it was definitely a good time. Uh, I, a fool I do in his folly has had asked, uh, are the woods named uh, Sherwood or Sherwood? Uh, it is Sherwood. Like like sharing and giving. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I I do want to say that um, you know, growing up, and we talked about this I think before we went live, um, but uh, growing up with a lot of games that were all combat based for role playing, um, I really enjoy the stuff that values the other aspects of storytelling <laughs> and um you know coming up in the the comics world it's kind of the same like there's a lot of comics that are popular that really focus on the combat um but some of my favorite and many cartoonist favorites are um like there was a time when x-men started adding little comics after the comic so like maybe the original oh yeah i remember scene. those and so, like, the the X-Men teens would, like, go to the mall. And so, like, yeah. instead of just, like, fighting the big, big bad. And um, during this game, there was even that thing of, like, oh, man, like, when are we going to get to the forest? Like, we got to get to the thing that we're supposed to be doing. And, um, you know, the the uh, obstacle that we're supposed to be challenging. And, and I had to sort of pull myself back and um, realize how much I was actually... Um, uh, or allow myself to enjoy the other stuff that we yeah. were doing leading up to that. And it's interesting because it's almost like a, um, like a kid's show, like uh, in Power Rangers, they'd have all this build up to the big battle scene anyway. And they're like, our signature move. Bah! Okay, <laughs> it's done. And the storytelling was actually about all the other stuff leading yeah. up to that. That's a hundred percent. I mean, there's a lot of cartoons that we've pulled from. I was saying, if you've ever, if you haven't watched it, you should. But uh, Craig of the Creek, Tim and I love it, and yep. uh, so Craig, good. Of, Craig of the Creek is pretty much where this is coming from. And then you know, in the cozy side, is you know, almost like that Animal Crossing or Wander Home, or somebody had mentioned Golden Sky Stories and some other things that remind people of that vibe. Um, is kind of what we went after and uh you know there's all these little fun things you could be doing but in that episodic cartoon vibe we're building towards a thing and then it's like you did it and that's it instead of it being like um you know four hours to get to that point or having three or four major scenes uh mainly for attention span of the players the time limit constraints and also even if you aren't a kid who needs this it's kind of a fun change as you just said than doing some of the other campaigns out there in the world so a lot of adults like it too <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i think even for kids it's good to remind them that there are other parts of life to i think it it, it does kind of have an inherent focus on mindfulness um yeah. especially i think the way that you're leading it 
I, I solved a problem by having a pool party. <laughs> just, yeah, exactly. Like, I, 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 I yeah. really wish my life were like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just say, solved a social come over issue. For a swim and maybe, everything will be fine. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe that's a future goal is like figuring out how, like when you get proposed with a problem in the future. Yeah, how do I it turn it into a pool That is a party. squad goal. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Okay, so Jim's getting a pool installed at your house. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Jim gets extra venture points for today for the pool <laughs> party. <laughs> so uh, where can everyone find all of you lovely people? Tell us what order to go in. Yeah, uh, the same order. Heather, okay. Heather you're first. <laughs> So uh, Heather O'Neill, again, with Ninth Level Games. Uh, you can follow on Twitter, I believe, and Instagram at Ninth Level Games with the number nine in front. And it's just Ninth Level on TikTok, just to be, you know, confusing. And then if you want to follow myself on Twitter, it's at Cat Physicist. Uh, and in both cases, it's mostly going to be talking about game design and or whatever is going on with uh, Ninth Level's projects. Uh, Jim. Hey, I am Jim Crocker, and uh, if you want to see me, the best place to do that is at conventions all up and down the East Coast and the Midwest, where I sell games on behalf of Indie Press Revolution and uh, other independent game publishers. You can find me online at Jim Likes Games, just about everywhere. That's the handle that I use. Jim, we'll see each other soon. <laughs> like PAX, if, PAX for sure, if not soon. Yeah, that so is for sure, yeah. I'll, I, actually, at PAX, I won't be selling games, but I will be running games in the games on demand room if folks want to come play with me that will happen <laughs> uh lara uh you can find me here at cast gamers on twitch every friday night except for next friday uh we are taking that weekend off for save against fear uh so you won't be able to catch any cast streaming until the 14th of october but you can also find me i'm rarely on twitter but i will respond uh at geek therapist uh or you can find me at uh geektherapy.org on our geek therapy radio uh podcast that's awesome you got that handle geek therapist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so <laughs> my name is nina uh, and you can also find me here on cast, uh, streaming on was every other Sunday, but now it's kind of like a uh, random Sunday. So check our <laughs> schedule, um, for gaze of our lives. Uh, we've got some backlog you can watch through, um, and some great adventures we've had. Uh, and then for my, um, work stuff, you can, uh, Go ahead and sign up for the stuff I'm going to be launching soon. Uh, just find at become storied on your favorite social media. So that's at become storied. And um, yeah, we can become storied together and just focusing on different ways to either um, create more meaningful stories or to um, get more meaning out of stories together. Love it. Nice. And uh, I'm Timothy Grant, and you can find me here on Friday nights. I'm currently running uh, Avatar Legends Friday nights, usually at 9.30. We're, you know, 9 .30, sometimes 9 .45 on time. 9.30, 9.45 Eastern, yeah. 9.30-ish, <laughs> yeah. You can find me on Twitter at Timothy Grant ESN, Emotional Support Nerd. Uh, mm -hmm. Or uh, you could find me on uh the podcast channels of Rolling for Change, where we play Shrinks on Bikes, which is a, a podcast of helping professionals playing kids on bikes. And aren't you going to be at a con next weekend too? Oh, I am going to be. At, I am going to be at that con. I'm going to be playing a bunch of games. I'm going to be running a bunch of games, and that is Save Against Fear. Uh, go check that out. You can come play games with us. Uh, you can. Uh, have fun play venture society play venture society you can also play a few other games that i'll be running which uh if you are interested about it go to save against fear.com i believe I, I think so yeah oh and before Google we were it. talking about if anyone's going to be there i'm not going to be there physically but um i sh might be there in robot form um rolling oh, around right. on an ipad so awesome uh, <laughs> <laughs> hope to see you all there <laughs>
And uh, if you're watching this live on uh, Twitch, uh, Menachem was gracious enough to drop the, the link for Save Against Fear in the chat. Thank you. All man. right, everyone. Uh, thank you, and uh, we'll see you next oh, time. Before we hop out, I do want to give a quick shout out for the inspiration for my character. There's amazing images of uh, cats and kittens and sharks uh just on instagram I'll look share up the link again <laughs> mofu sand so it's m-o-f-u underscore sand it uh, is adorable and mm -hmm. that you should fill your the rest of your weekend with that <laughs> with joy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and on on that happy note goodbye everyone bye all Thanks. bye everyone bye. thank you